Good afternoon. We'll call the meeting to order today. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone to the 10th meeting of the ETSU Board of Trustees. Today's meeting is significant for the Board because we will take action on faculty tenure and promotions, tuition and fees, and new academic programs. However, before we move into the formal consideration of the agenda, there are a couple of items that I would like to review. Earlier this month, our efforts related to co combating the opioid epidemic were recognized and deepened as we announced a partnership with Virginia Tech and the receipt of the Eugene Washington Engagement Award grant. Through this partnership, ETSU and Virginia Tech will help Central Appalachia communities become more proactive in the battle against the opioid crisis and connected public health concerns, such as neonatal abstinence syndrome, hepatitis C, HIV outbreaks, and mental health issues. As the project director, Dr. Robert Pack, noted in a recent Johnson City Press interview, the immediacy of the crisis creates a reactionary climate for institutions and organizations in the throes of that crisis. On behalf of the board, I would like to commend Dr. Pack and his colleagues for their dedication and we hope that this is just one more block in our emerging research portfolio. I would also like to take a moment to thank our faculty and staff for their efforts over the spring semester to ensure that our students realize their dream of graduating. Next Saturday, more than 2,000 students will walk across the stage to receive their degrees. Our graduates' journey to commencement began with interactions with our staff, in admissions, in financial aid, or the scholarship office. Our staff's willingness to answer questions, mentor, and assist students along the path to college provided a foundation for their success. In the classroom, our faculty have pushed our students academically, encouraged them to reach higher, to participate in undergraduate research, or to engage in study abroad uh, opportunities. Earlier this month, the ETSU Foundation launched our first capital campaign in more than a decade to raise funds to support our students, our faculty, and our staff. During his address to the foundation, President Nolan stated that institutions are bigger than any one person, but when individuals are collectively committed to a mission, they can be transformative. I share his perspective, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, Thank you for all that you do to transform the lives of our students. At this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Linville to call the roll, please. Dr. Olson? Present. Ms. Ayers? Here. Mr. DiCarlo? Here. Mr. Golden? Here. Ms. Grisham? Present. Dr. Latimer? Ms. Miller? <laughs> Present. Mr. Powell? Present. Mr. Ramsey? Here. Mr. Nyswanger? Here. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. First order of business is amend the consent agenda. Before we move forward with the published agenda, I'd like to ask the board to consider, uh, consider adding one item to today's consent agenda. That item is the approval of changes to the university's 
institutional mission profile that is annually submitted to the Tennessee Higher Education Commission. In order to meet THEC's scheduling requirements, I would like to add approval of the institutional mission profile to today's consent agenda. A copy of the profile changes has been provided to you and include language about first generation students and supporting research and clinical service delivery. One additional change is updating the profile to reflect the university's change in the Carnegie Foundation classification. Are there any questions? If not, may I have a motion to add approval of the revised institutional mission profile to the consent agenda? So have a moved. Motion? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Okay. Uh, next item of business is approval of the minutes of February 22nd behind tab one. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Yes, Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Next is uh, a report from the Finance Administrative Committee, Chairman Steve DeCarlo. Thank you. Um, let me start off by saying uh, thank you to BJ and uh, Dr. King for everything she's done for us, kept us on track. We had a uh, quick and spirited discussion this morning. Uh, so let me start off. The Finance and Administration Committee met this morning to review several items. The committee approved a 2% tuition increase for the College of Medicine and the College of Pharmacy. Increases based on a cost study. Both colleges began their semester prior to the main campus and need to have approved tuition for fee assessment. Prior year increase was 2% for medicine and 3% for pharmacy. And that is the committee's recommendation. Okay, the first action item is um, recommending the tuition rates for the College of Medicine and College of Pharmacy for next year. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign. The second action item uh, is recommending a salary increase for faculty and staff for the next fiscal year. Any questions there? All in favor, please. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I was going to finish. <laughs> oh, I'm no worries. Uh, we'll keep practicing. We'll get better. Uh, so the committee approved a 2% across the board salary increase. The main campus appropriation did not specify a salary increase, and the College of Pharmacy does not receive an appropriation. The College of Medicine and Family Medicine were provided a 2% salary increase in the state of, in their state appropriation. The 2% increase will be implemented July 1, the $500 minimum increase. Again, this is the committee's recommendation. Now. <laughs> <laughs> recommendation is for a salary increase for faculty and staff for the next next fis fiscal year as as described if there are no further questions all those in favor please say aye aye opposed like sign the the third uh issue discussion this morning non-mandatory fee increases were presented to the committee <clears throat> the course fees are being simplified and from what i understand that is a big deal uh, and will be assessed based on the subject. The presentation of fees on the web will be a single page instead of the current five pages. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some fees will increase and provide funding for college level investments in line with the new distributed budget model. The fees apply to the College of Arts and Sciences, Business and Technology, and Clemmer College. The fees are similar to those charged in the academic health sciences 
which resulted in the building's 60 IPER investment in other health science college and department enhancements. The fees were presented to the SGA in two meetings in March and April and received endorsement. That is our committee recommendation. Committee has reviewed and recommended approval of non-mandatory non fees. Are there any further questions? I have a, a couple of questions. We're under a, a new budget model. I was wondering if what percentage of the student fees might go directly to department chairs uh, for use because they're being generated by the number of students enrolled in the departments. And if, if we may not have that number, and as a second consideration, I'm sure that they will go to the deans, at least I feel they'll probably go to the deans of the colleges first uh, for disbursement. And Dr. Alsop, with respect to your question, uh, the distribution of fee revenues generated from the material that is before the board's consideration today would remain within the colleges from which those fees were generated. So in the College of Education, for example, the fees that would come from the courses outlined in the agenda materials, that revenue would stay within the college. That revenue would not revert to central administration as a whole. The deans, in conjunction with their chairs, would have the ability to distribute those investments the same way they have the ability to manage control of college level budgets within the new uh, institutional budget model. So that would be a shared governance conversation with the faculty, the chairs, and the deans of the respective colleges around how those funds would be invested that would be derived from uh, materials outlined uh, within your agenda. President Nolan, thank you for clarifying. Thank you. Any other questions by the board? No further questions. I'll call for the vote. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Two, two other <coughs> items we discussed. The committee discussed comparative tuition and mandatory fees for public institutions in Tennessee. Tuition and mandatory fees will be presented at a called meeting in May. These require a public comment period and the data is being prepared. And then the second issue, the committee reviewed quarterly assessments greater, greater than $250,000. <clears> the agreements were all processed in accordance with state policy. And I think the last point, uh, and this will conclude my report, is that BJ, Dr. King and their team uh, had another audit and Again, no findings, uh, and it goes without saying, that's very difficult to achieve, and the staff uh, should be commended for their efforts and hard work, uh, and it shows up in, in things like these audit reports. Yeah. So noted. Thank you. Thanks, Steve, for the committee's work. Um, <clears throat> this morning, the Academic and Student Affairs Committee was convened by Dr. Linda Lattimore, couldn't be with us this afternoon. I think Dr. Bishop will report on the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this was an important meeting for the uh, Academics, uh, Students, and Research Committee because it's the time of year that we consider promotion and tenure recommendations. Uh, it's the culmination of a year's work and review from faculty submitting their dossiers for review within the departments and the colleges uh, and at the central administration level. Uh, and um, I'm pleased to report that those recommendations were presented to the uh, Academics Committee this morning uh, and were endorsed unanimously. So the committee brings those recommendations to you for action. Okay. So the <clears throat> first one is promotion of tenure of faculty members? Promotion and tenure of, of all and, faculty and, members. Yes, okay. Based on the recommendation of Dr. Nolan and approved by the Academic and Research and Student Success Committee, uh, are there any any further questions? Call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The section, second action item that was brought before the committee this morning was the approval of the letter of notification regarding the establishment of a doctorate in occupational therapy. 
Uh, this is a program that will be in the College of Clinical and Rehabilitative Health Sciences. Uh, it's consistent with uh, the programming that's offered in that college. It complements very nicely our doctorate in public health. Uh, it does complement our doctorate in public health, but also our doctorate in physical therapy. Uh, and the uh, program that's being developed now, which is a PhD program in rehab sciences, uh, that letter of notification is the first step in the process of full approval. And uh, it goes to THEC from this point if the board approves it today. And then it comes back for action on campus. And it'll be brought back to you for final approval. Um, we did have some discussion in that about how we might make that process more nimble, both on campus and off. Uh, and that will give us something to work on for the next few months. The committee recommended approval of this letter of intent. OK. This is for the recommendation and approval of a letter of notification seeking to establish a doc doctoral degree in occupational therapy. Any questions by the board? All in favor? Please uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Another letter of notification was brought before the committee this morning, and this one's for the master's in uh, fine arts degree in digital media, an MFA in digital media. Uh, and this proposed degree uh, would help graduates to further develop their professional, technical, and artistic skills to break into an increasingly competitive industry, and one for which this institution has had significant experience uh, with our digital media programming. So to move it to the next level of a Master of Fine Arts uh, is really uh, carrying out the mission of the university and providing significant educational experiences for people uh, in this field. The committee recommended this unanimously. Uh, and I present it to you today. Okay. Are there questions on this recommendation from committee? I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Uh, this, oh, and I don't have to take this next one to you. <laughs> we approved the calendar also for the next three years, uh, but that doesn't need further endorsement at this point. Uh, but it does include the, uh, the uh, holidays that this board approved for us last year, and we thank you for those, too, in addition to all of the federal requirements for the calendar. Uh, and there was active discussion about research and the role of research uh, in the ability to uh, move this institution forward, uh, and that was a, a dynamic discussion, as well as the discussion about student bridge programs and how we can provide excellent mentoring to all students at the university. That concludes the report of the thank committee. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Next is our report from the audit committee, our chair, Mr. Bolton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, every year, the audit committee reviews the audit committee charter, internal audit charter, and various audit policies. That's our first part of the business this morning, which we reviewed and had no changes to. In addition, we review uh, the audit plan. There were minor changes to the audit plan. A couple of pushed out because of some other priority work that uh, took its place. Also received reports on audits and investigations performed. One investigation in particular to note for the entire board uh, Senator uh, um, had to do with the Center for Academic Achievement, specifically due to the appearance of inappropriate procurement card purchases. An investigation review of the Center for Academic Achievement occurred and transactions were identified where um, there were charges that were inappropriate and uh, raise concerns of abuse of time as well as uh, fraud. These, uh, this resulted in a referral to university police and the person who was at the center of it is no longer an employee of the university. In addition, um, we're happy to receive uh, uh, the report as uh, Steve previously mentioned from the controller of the treasury of the state of Tennessee, the audited financial statements uh, exceptionally clean report, no deficiencies identified, and sometimes I think we're, we're quick to flag things that don't go well and we let things that are, are great and fail to pause and express appreciation, and, but this is one absolutely that deserves pause and appreciation because pretty much to be that clean requires every uh, employee of the university um, to, to do well and particularly in the finance and audit organization, so commend President Nolan, under your leadership, to have such a great um, report card from the state. So thank you. The real accolades go to Dr. King and her staff. Right. So th th uh, thank you to all. 
Um, and with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I turn that, that concludes my report. Thank you, David. Item eight on the agenda today is the consent agenda. As noted in the materials found behind tab eight, agenda uh, of your board book, several routine items are included on the consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that members would like to pull for consideration by the full? Seeing none, then do I have a motion for adoption of the consent agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likes aye. Thank you. Nine is the rule for residency classification has previously been reviewed by the administration committee. The text of the rule has been edited and formatted to meet the requirements outlined by the Tennessee, the Tennessee Department of State. The text can be found behind tab five in your materials. Following approval by a roll call vote, the proposed rule will be forwarded for consideration by the state through the steps required by law. We need a roll call. Yes, we do. Okay. Ready for that, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Dr. Alsop? Vote approval. Ms. Ayers? Yes. Mr. DiCarlo? Yes. Mr. Golden? Aye. Ms. Grisham? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Ramsey? Yes. Mr. Nicewander? Yes. Carry, sir. Thank you, Dr. Lippel. 10, policy on public appearances before the board. As provided by the FOCUS Act, the ETSU Board of Trustees sets rules, policies, and guidelines for the operation of the university. In order to ensure transparency and accountability, the policy on public appearances before the board outlines the ability of individuals to address the board during a regularly scheduled board meeting. A copy of the policy can be found behind your tab six. Are there any questions about this? Do I have a motion to move this forward? So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Number 11, resolution of appreciation for Kiana Miller, student trustee. Dr. Nolan. We're going to move spots here for a second. First, but before I begin, there are a number of individuals who we are going to recognize today. Uh, this is a time of the year in the academic calendar in many respects, which is bittersweet, uh, particularly for those of us who've had the honor to watch students grow, evolve, develop, and mature. Um, and it's also a period in which we say thank you to members of the faculty and staff who are transitioning into the next phase of their career. So the resolutions that will come before you um, are our opportunity to reflect upon the impact that these individuals have had on the life of the institution and on behalf of the board to convey our thanks. So the first is to, that will be easier, thank you, Dr. Bindle. Um, the first is to Ms. Kiana Miller. Whereas Keanu Miller has created a legacy of encouragement and appreciation as a distinguished student leader on the campus of East Tennessee State University, and whereas Ms. Miller has successfully pursued a double major in English and political science as an honors and discipline student at ETSU, and whereas Ms. Miller has been an effective and energetic member of the ETSU Student Government Association, including a term as its president, and whereas Ms. Miller has shared her knowledge, abilities, talents through involvement in the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, the International Women's Day, the ETSU Commission for Women's Standing Committee, 
and as inaugural member of the Omicron Delta Pi National Leadership Honorship Society at ETSU. And whereas Ms. Miller has resided in both Middle Tennessee and West Tennessee, but chose to pursue her college degree in our grand division of the state, East Tennessee, and whereas Ms. Miller has ably represented the interests of ETSU students during her tenure on the Board of Trustees, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its deepest appreciation and co congratulations to Kiana Miller for her exemplary service and for representing the very highest ideals of East Tennessee State University. Love that. Oh. Uh, um. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's fine. I, I was uh, talking about something earlier today about uh, um, when I came here as a Discover student uh, my junior year, and um, my parents first didn't even want to come up here because it was so far. Um, we had to take my brother and sister out of school, uh, which they uh, we didn't mind, uh, but mm -hmm. my parents did and uh, came up here and, and saw the, the scenery and met all of these incredible people and also got to stay at the Carnegie, which helped. <laughs> and um, I, I fell in love with this university. And I, ever since then, I've just tried to, I don't know, do, do well for it. My mom always told me to leave something better than how you found it. So I hope I did that. <laughs> um, and thank you. Hopefully we uh, graduate May 4th. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, now that she has the resolution, all those in favor of her having that resolution, <laughs> take it back. please say aye. Uh, my apologies, Ms. Chair. We, we can add that to the list. Um, I'll do the next one properly. Um, before you for the board's consideration is a resolution of appreciation for Dr. Fred Alsop. Whereas Dr. Fred J. Alsop III is a highly respected member of the faculty at East Tennessee State University, and whereas Dr. Alsop has shared his vast knowledge with students at the Department of Biological Science at ETSU for over 45 years, and whereas Dr. Alsop is internationally known for his work in ornithology, and whereas Dr. Alsop is the founding director of the highly successful George L. Carter Railroad Museum on the campus of ETSU, and whereas Dr. Alsop was selected as the very first faculty member to serve on ETSU's Board of Trustees, and whereas Dr. Alsop has ably represented the interest of ETSU faculty members, staff, and students during his history-making tenure on the Board of Trustees, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its deepest appreciation and congratulations to Dr. Alsop for his exemplary service and for representing the highest ideals of East Tennessee State University. That motion is before you for the board's approval. Do I have a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Dr. Nolan, and thank you, my colleagues on the board. I always think of the sage Yogi Berra, who said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. I have been most fortunate in my long career here at ETSU to have many forks in the road placed in front of me, and sometimes I have stumbled along the right path. I can't think of a, of a better honor than to have my colleagues as faculty to elect me to be the first member of the very first board to govern ETSU as an independent board. Uh, it has been the highlight of my career. It has been a, a pleasure as well as a privilege to make new friends, new colleagues, friendships that will last long after I leave the board. So thank you for the honor today and enjoy the rest of the board meeting. I think it's going to be short. <laughs> Mr. Chair, the next item for your consideration is a resolution of appreciation for Edward J. Kelly. Whereas Edward J. Kelly has served as University Counsel for East Tennessee State University since 1997, 
and whereas Mr. Kelly, in this role, has held full responsibility for legal affairs for the institution, and whereas Mr. Kelly has successfully negotiated leases and contracts and mediate and resolve disputes involving employment matters, student affairs, immigration, construction, medical malpractice, and other issues throughout his service to ETSU, and whereas Mr. Kelly was instrumental in the creation of the ETSU Research Foundation and the enhanced use of lease agreement, which gave ETSU access to nearly 41 acres of property at the Quillen VA Medical Center campus, whereas Mr. Kelly has coordinated outside counsel for the university and has served as university liaison with the Tennessee Attorney General for matters involving state litigation, and whereas Mr. Kelly served as a Fulbright Scholar in the Ukraine and Belarus in 2003 and taught courses and gave workshops on negotiation, alternative dispute resolution, management and constitutional law at universities throughout both countries, whereas in 2007, Mr. Kelly was again named a Fulbright Scholar and Senior Specialist in Azerbaijan. And then finally, he was again named a Fulbright Scholar in 2015, lecturing on topics in Mykolos Romarius University in Valenis, Lithuania. Therefore, be it resolved that upon his well-deserved retirement, the Board of Trustees extends its deepest appreciation and congratulations to Edward Kelly for an accomplished career and for unfailing loyalty to East Tennessee State University. Mr. Chair, that letter of resolution is before you for your consideration. All right. Do I have a second to that motion? A second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'd like to thank the board. Uh, I spent 40 years in higher education law, 20 at one place and 20 at another, and working for five presidents. And it was the honor of my life is to work for those five presidents that, uh, that I was able to work for, especially Dr. Nolan. Um, it's, it's really been a trip. It's been a joy. My father once told me, he said, when you start talking, you got to have a great opening sentence, you got to have a great, great closing sentence, and keep them close together. So, <laughs> so uh, with that, thank you so much. I'm really honored. Mr. Chair, the next resolution for your consideration is for Dr. Jane M. Jones. Whereas Dr. Jane M. Jones is a three-time alumna of East Tennessee State University, having earned a bachelor's degree in nursing, a graduate degree in public health administration, and a doctorate in education. And whereas Dr. Jones has ably and skillfully provided support for all presidential activities at ETSU, acting on behalf of the president through her role as chief of staff, and whereas Dr. Jones has provided sound and wise leadership for ETSU's Division of Health Sciences by also serving as the university's Associate Vice President for Health Affairs, and whereas Dr. Jones' administrative experience at ETSU is longstanding through her prior positions as Executive Assistant to the President, Assistant Dean for Curriculum in the Quillen College of Medicine, and Director of the Kellogg Interdisciplinary Curriculum for Medicine, Nursing, Public, and Allied Health, and whereas Dr. Jones has extensive classroom teaching experience having served as a faculty member in the ETSU College of Nursing, and whereas Dr. Jones is a member of the National Honor Society of Pi Kappa Phi, and was also recognized by Altrusa International of Kingsport with its Honorarium for Women in Industry Award. Therefore, be it resolved that upon her well-deserved retirement, the Board of Trustees extends its deepest appreciation and congratulations to Dr. Jane M. Jones for her dedication and service to East Tennessee State University from her days as a student to her career in the office of the president. Mr. Chair, that resolution is before you for your consideration. Okay. Do I have a second to that resolution? Second. second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And, and before Dr. Jones comes forward, I, I just would like to take a, a matter of personal privilege. Um, Dr. Jones has had to put up with me for seven and a half years. Um, she has kept me in and out of trouble. She does her best to ensure that I'm on time for meetings, and she doesn't do a very good job at that. Um, but she is a wonderful person, and it has been an honor to work with her. He asked me if I wanted to say anything. He knows how I am. I do not like the microphone. I do not like being in front of people. 
I love the behind the scenes that I've been able to do um, with Dr. Nolan, Dr. Bishop, and with Dr. Paul Stanton. I couldn't have had better leadership role models, and I've learned so much. And this is my family. Always will be 45 years worth. I don't know how to go home, <laughs> but I'm going to try. And as I finish uh, this journey, I look forward to what the future has to hold. And there's tr really, truly no words to say what this institution means to me. And you all have given me much more than I ever gave to the institution. Thank you, and God bless. Mr. Chair, the final resolution uh, is for Dr. Bert C. Bach. Whereas Dr. Bert C. Bach has dedicated over 43 years of his life to higher education in the state of Tennessee, and whereas Dr. Bach has been a true champion for ETSU, beginning with his service as Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs for the Tennessee Board of Regents, and continuing through his interim presidency of ETSU in 1991-92, and as his tenure as Provost of Vice President for Academic Affairs since 1994, Whereas Dr. Bach has been recognized with a Meritorious Service Award from the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools for his work in chairing more than 20 accreditation teams. And whereas Dr. Bach provided expert leadership to ET ETSU in 2001, when the university was asked to be the first institution to pilot a new online standard by SACS. Whereas Dr. Bach has been a prime mover behind the creation of ETSU's Honors Program and later its Honors College. Whereas Dr. Bach is one of the region's most loyal patrons of the arts. Whereas Dr. Bach has been honored by the creation of the Bert C. Bach Servant Leadership Award, which recognizes ETSU faculty and staff members who have gone above and beyond in supporting student success and helping students persist to graduation. And whereas Dr. Bach is one of Tennessee's greatest and most respected leaders in higher education with a profound influence on ETSU's academic programs and student success initiatives, from the moment that he arrived on our campus. Therefore, be it resolved that upon his well-deserved retirement, the Board of Trustees extends its deepest appreciation and congratulations to Dr. Bert C. Bach for his remarkable career in higher education and for his long-standing loyalty to East Tennessee State University. Mr. Chair, that resolution is uh, presented for your consideration. Thank you. Do I have a second to the resolution as presented by Dr. Nolan? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. I would like to thank everyone for this moment with this these number of years at this institution. Uh, I taught my first college class in Georgia in 1959. And for you doing the math, that's 29 years ago. Uh, but uh, I am, uh, my years here at ETSU have been wonderful. They've been wonderful because of the people. They've been wonderful because of the region. They've been wonderful because of all the programs with which uh, I've had the opportunity to interact with all of you and to play a part. Thank you all very much. It's now my pleasure to turn uh, to Dr. Nolan to provide the President's report. Well, Mr. Chair, members of the board, um, I first want to start by acknowledging uh, the significant loss that this university will incur with the separation of the individuals that we just recognized. Um, these individuals have given their heart and soul and life to this institution. In many respects, much of what we enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis, we enjoy because of the leadership that they provided. And I want to thank each of them for the leadership that they have provided and for the students that they have impacted throughout their careers. Mr. Chair, as I move through my comments this morning, um, I'd like to start by saying thank you to this board, saying thank you to the individuals in this room, 
and saying thank you to those across the region for your patience with my family and I as we explored an opportunity at the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. The University of Tennessee at Knoxville is an institution that is special to my wife and I. It's where we met. There are individuals there who truly had a profound influence on our lives. And I recognize that we have placed this institution in a unique position over the course of the past couple of weeks. But as we visited at Knoxville, and as I've had a chance to reflect upon things here at this institution in the past week and a half, I've been struck by conversations that I've had with folks across this campus. I've been struck by conversations that I've had with faculty and staff who have wished us well as we explore, but said we really hope that you'll stay. I've been touched by conversations with students who have expressed likewise. And really what I've been moved by is the power of this institution to impact the lives of the people of this region. I've been moved by the work that's underway. A week and a half ago, we launched a $120 million capital fund to raise badly needed funds for scholarships, for endowed chairs, and for things that will allow us to continue to meet our mission obligations. Earlier this week, we launched ETSU Health under one umbrella, creating a platform for our clinics to become the practice of choice, but more importantly, a platform academically that provides distinction as we tell the stories of the outstanding academic programs that exist at this institution. I've also been deeply touched by our mission. Yesterday in the Dome, there were more than a thousand young adults competing in Special Olympics. And I had the honor to be on stage with our head women's basketball coach, Brittany Azell, a graduate of this institution, Dr. Azell, say, let the games begin. Then I had the profound honor to walk over to Wharf Pickle and welcome 20 students from the Mountain Mission School who are here exploring their future opportunities in post-secondary education. Then I had the chance to walk through the center of campus and our ROTC program was holding a fundraiser in which I took a sledgehammer and got to beat a car. <laughs> and if you've ever had a bad day, take a sledgehammer to a car, things just kind of go away. I've had the chance to greet students at honors convocations and tell them, I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks at commencement. But most importantly, I've had the honor to work with individuals that I really don't want to say goodbye to. Yesterday evening, I spoke with President Randy Boyd of the University of Tennessee and informed him that I'm withdrawing my name from consideration at the University of Tennessee, and I will stay at East Tennessee State University to continue our work. It's now time to get to work, so I'd like to move on to the action portions of my agenda. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, Don and Jackson, I love it here. Um, we've got a lot left to do. We've got some ribbons to cut on buildings. Um, and with that theme of there's work to do, Mr. Chair, I'd like to walk through the work of the institution, if that's all right with you. Please do. All right. First is an update on ETSU Health. I uh, mentioned the launch of ETSU Health earlier this week. want to really salute Dr. Wilsey Bishop for her leadership. But what this does is it provides our institutional clinics with the opportunity to be the practice of choice. It provides the opportunity for shared services on the back office across those clinical operations. It gives us the opportunity for enhanced coordination and potential integration of many of our clinical operations. And it also puts an accent and a focus on interprofessional education and our ability to market that as a point of differentiation for the university. You're going to see a lot more about ETSU Health. I think Dr. Linville is wearing one of the, there you go, he's not wearing the traditional E. He's breaking the rules, um, but he's allowed to do so this week because this is a major launch for the university. Um, next is legislative update. Uh, we continue to move through the legislative session. Uh, as Governor Ramsey will note, uh, this is much later in the calendar year than it was when he was Lieutenant Governor. 
Uh, but much of that is a result of Governor Lee's inauguration and the impact that that's had on the budget cycle. Um, as it relates to the budget, as we shared with the board at the last meeting, uh, we are number two in the state in terms of receipt of new outcome formula funding. Uh, there's support for deferred maintenance. Our capital project for the Humanities Building was not funded this cycle, but the positive news is that it was number five on the list. Three projects were funded, which means I'm confident that it will be number two on the list. Uh, that is more than a $72 million project that will uh, provide enhanced facilities for students in those subjects that are really at the heart of the Gen Ed core. Um, part of our capital campaign is to raise our match. Uh, and Ms. Ritter and I have already begun to kind of strategize on how we can conduct that heavy lifting. Um, there's been a lot of focus on your staff's behalf this session as it relates to the health sciences and telling the story of the health sciences in Nashville. Um, I'm confident that legislation will move through that will enhance the number of residency positions for the Quillen College of Medicine. I'm very hopeful that there will be support for rural health at this institution, uh, potentially an expanded role in rural health research, and we'll see how that unfolds in the next couple of weeks. Um, however, I, I do not feel at this juncture uh, that a couple of other health sciences initiatives that we've really advocated for will be funded this year. Uh, but the good news is, is we've set the stage and quite often setting the stage is the most important role because that allows you to then have the opportunity to tell that story again next year and the year after that. And sooner or later, we will bring those things home. Um, any questions on legislative update before I move to the next number? You all don't see the numbers, I do. Uh, that's, that's one of the things about keeping a secret. I kind of did all this at the last minute, so I didn't share with the chair in advance the items on my agenda as I usually do. So you've got to bear with me, Mr. Chair. Any questions on, on Nashville? The next is just a, a quick overview of what will come before this board in May. Uh, today you took action on tuition and fees for specialized programs. You also took action on fees for the College of Pharmacy and the College of Medicine. In May, at a called meeting, a date to be determined, uh, we will bring the university's budget to you for consideration. We will also bring full tuition and fees to you for your consideration. I anticipate them to be uh, right around 2%. Uh, those fee increases will be structured within legislation uh, dictated by the Tuition Transparency Act. So we will bring not only the fees, but the feedback that we've received from the general public about those. Uh, and I also think you'll see within budgets uh, some early indications of how we as an institution will prioritize the investments that will be derived from some of the program simplification uh, things that you work through today. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation on our campus about compensation and within those colleges for which fees are available, particularly those colleges with significant market gaps and adjunct salaries, that provides the deans the opportunity uh, in an appropriate manner to address inequities as the market bears. So those are all things that we will explore between now and our May board meeting. Um, we, in the Academic Affairs uh, Research and Student Affairs Committee, Dr. Bishop provided an update on some of the things that are underway with the transition. Uh, I mentioned the review of structure at the last board meeting, indicating that we would examine items on an immediate, uh, short-term and long-term venue. Uh, once again, as a reminder, in the immediate term, we have made the adjustments in terms of reporting in areas such as admission, community service and engagement, equity and inclusion, inclusion and compliance. Uh, today in the audit committee, we shared with the audit committee the work that we're doing in the compliance area. So those are four examples of concrete actions that we as an institution have taken since the last board meeting to begin that restructuring process. And that restructuring is to ensure that we as a university are properly aligned to allow us to meet our strategic planning objectives. Between now and the start of the fall, you will see us start and close some medium term initiatives such as the examination of research and innovation at the campus. And then as we transition into the fall, we'll look at more long-term horizon items, such as potential alignment of academic programs within colleges. So at each board meeting, I'll provide updates to the board on that work. Uh, my update at this point is the immediate term changes have been made. And under Dr. Bishop's leadership, we will move forward on the near term. I do want to thank Dr. Bishop and Dr. Bach for the manner in which they have approached the transition. Um, once the transition was made, they've started to meet jointly. So they have jointly met with deans, jointly met with chairs, reviewing budgets, reviewing operations. 
so that when the handoff occurs, it is a seamless handoff. Um, transitions aren't the easiest things to do, but I'm very proud of my two colleagues and the manner in which they are positioning the institution to move forward. Um, next update relates to some things uh, in the space with Ballad and our areas in research. Uh, earlier this month, we finalized the MOU with Ballad. Uh, this is something that the board uh, approved for Mountain States a year and a half ago. Uh, this is changing the names to protect the innocent, but it allows us to then move forward with those formal structures that will allow the development of our enhanced partnership. We're beginning to staff the committees and look forward to working with the executive committee to name the representative of this board to uh, some of the joint uh, committees that will frame the operations of that MOU. Within the area of rural health, I think that we have a unique op opportunity as a university to address some of the challenges that Governor Lee has outlined. Uh, it's clear that one of his uh, priorities is to focus on the needs of rural communities across the state. I've spent significant time talking with faculty, with staff, with deans, some of whom are in the room. And I will th think you will see us bring forward, probably within the next month, uh, an exciting announcement relating to an emerging role uh, that this university will play to address the rural health needs, not only of this, of this region, but of the state and the nation as a whole. Um, let me pause there to see if there are any questions on ballot, on the transition, or on our pending budget cycle. And Mr. Chair, I only have a couple more. Um, next is a construction update. Um, if you were to look outside uh, the windows here, the Martin Center is coming up and out of the ground. Uh, you can begin to see the glass uh, taking shape. Uh, hopefully this summer you'll see that round through the front curve of the building. Uh, the glass is the appropriate shade of blue, and it is going to be a beautiful building. A building that will really enhance the operations of this university. Uh, this is the celebratory season, and I look forward in the celebratory seasons to come to honors convocations and to graduations in the main hall of Martin. I also really look forward to the return of the CULP to the fabric of the institution. CULP remains on time and under budget. Uh, Jeremy, you got to keep us there. And uh, I had the chance earlier this week to take a tour of the CULP. Um, the work is just phenomenal. And I hope that the board, as we convene for the fall, can have a chance to see the building in its rough form because it's really spectacular to see that transformation underway. Um, we're also working through a couple of issues related to Lamb Hall. As many will remember, we received funding for that project last year. Uh, we're having to update our facilities master plan. That's something TEC is requiring us to do to then allow us to move forward with the expenditure of those funds. But we hope to be in a position this fall to present to you kind of the design and conceptual framework for that project. Uh, there are a number of deferred maintenance projects that we'll work on this summer. Um, have made a commitment to the student body that we will make some enhancements to Brown Hall. One of the things that was very important to them as I met with the SGA as we talked about uh, their priorities for the campus is that we make some investments in that building. That's the workhorse for all of our science programs, be it biology, as Dr. Alsop knows better than I, chemistry and others. Uh, so over the course of the summer, you'll see some work there. Um, I would like to introduce two members of the board who I think both are here with us today. Uh, they will transition into their roles uh, this summer, uh, but I would like to introduce Dr. Virginia Foley, who is the faculty trustee to the board. Uh, Dr. Foley is former president of the Faculty Senate. Uh, she is a colleague of mine in the Ed Leadership Program, and I think you will really enjoy working with Dr. Foley. Um, she is an outstanding leader on this campus. The first is, the second is Christopher Santana. Christopher is a graduate student majoring in his master's in business administration. Um, Christopher was selected by the student body. I've had the chance to watch him grow and evolve, uh, an outstanding and active student on campus. And I think you'll look forward to working with these two members of the board as they assume their positions this summer. Um, and, and Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd like to, to kind of close with a story and then I, I want to really close with, with asking someone to, to be remembered. Um, and my story relates to the impact of this institution on individuals. Next week is graduation. And I hope that you as board members have the time uh, to join us on Saturday, either for the morning commencement or for the afternoon. 
Um, each year during that commencement ceremony, I will ask all of those who are the first in their family to graduate from college to stand. The house lights will go up and 40% of the graduating class will stand. Um, one of the things for me that was just really powerful as I reflected upon the things that Don and I have experienced was the chance to see a first generation college student from this institution, from Greene County, who graduated with his bachelor's degree, who Dr. Sherlin helped with a graduate assistantship to get his master's degree, who's now getting his PhD in logistics and transportation at Knoxville. That person is realizing his dreams because of the things we do here. And if there's one thing that I think everyone in this room needs to be proud of, it's our mission. And you'll see that mission embodied at commencement. So for trustees, I know your calendars are busy, but we would love to have you join us next Saturday as we celebrate the greatest day of the year on this campus, which is commencement. And my close is to ask you to remember someone in your thoughts and prayers. Dr. Paul Stanton, President Emeritus, is having surgery today. Um, Dr. Stanton is suffering from cancer, uh, and this surgery will allow him to be on the road to recovery. So as you do the things that you do as you pass through your day, please just take a moment to remember President Stanton and his family on this of all days. He is in recovery now. Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. I'd be happy to take any questions from the board on the matters that I outlined or any other matters that are of your question or importance. Okay, questions? Any other business to come before the board? If not, we stand adjourned. Thank you for being here. Thank you.